In today's video, we are going to be checking and setting the bump steer on the Mustang right here, but this process is similar across most vehicles, so let's jump into it. Welcome. So, as I said, we're going to be checking the bump steer on the car. Uh, those of you that have been following along know that I developed my own uh, double wishbone front suspension on the car, and you might be surprised to learn that I actually have not uh, checked or set the bump steer on it since I've done it and I've been running this uh, suspension for uh, over, almost two years now and I haven't got around to it and uh, yeah, shame on me. I haven't really thought it uh, as a high priority to get the bump steer set, but I really need to. It can be some good benefits, but I got everything I think fairly close, but we'll actually uh, do some measuring today and figure out how close it actually is. And another thing, reason that I haven't really done it because it does require uh, removing some uh, things. So the coilover has to come out so you can actually move the suspension up and down. So it is kind of a hassle to be able to disassemble the suspension and then reassemble things. And yeah, it's kind of a headache uh, to do. Let's talk about what bump steer is real quick. And to do that, let me jump over to the board. In case you're not familiar with what bump steer actually is, so it's it's really as the name implies, as you hit a bump, the car steers. So this happens because let's say we got the pivot and the lower control arm. So we'll pivot here at the, the body and then this is where the, the wheel is. So as this moves up or down, there could be this travels on an arc. I think we can all agree on that. And then you'll have your tie rod to do the steering and that connects on there and then that can also travel through uh, an arc and that arc can be different depending on the how far where this is placed and where this is placed so on most cars we can't really change this location uh, this is at the the steering rack so this is where our steering comes in so we can adjust this uh, side either up or down to change this arc and get it to kind of line up with the arc of the lower control arm. So that is basically what we're doing. We're adjusting the, the distance at uh, the spindle end to make it to where it's traveling along the same arc as the lower control arm. That's maybe not the most technical engineering uh, standpoint, but that's the basic premises of uh, bump steer as I understand it. So let's take a look at the car and see what we can actually do. So on the front suspension, we have, here's the tie rod that comes in. And you'll notice that this looks a little bit different than a normal tie rod. We don't really have the typical joint that you would see on any kind of car. Uh, and that's because bump steer is not typically adjustable on, on your car. You have to get a special kit, which basically makes it to where you can set this at different heights from the pickup point. So on here, I have the Maximum Motorsports uh, bump steer kit. So basically it re gets rid of the outer tie rod and replaces it with a rod end and a bolt and some spacers in there. So let me raise the suspension up and we can kind of see if there is anything that's visible on uh, bump steer. This is with the wheel already turned out. But as we kind of go out, it looks like there might have been a little bit of toe in, but it's not turning, it's not really turning too much, so that's good. But uh, it is something that we will measure uh, next here. As it droops down, it looked like it kind of pulled in just a little bit. To measure the bump steer, we have a bump steer kit. So you also notice that I had to remove the, the brake caliper. So that's another slight annoyance of having to do a uh, bump steer, but this is the bump steer kit from Maximum Motorsports. It's just the one that I have. There are other ones out there, but this one is uh, nice and simple, which is always, always a plus. Uh, so basically we put this guy onto here and then we'll have another board that we're measuring the distance uh, between the front and the rear to see what our toe change is as we cycle the suspension up and down. So it's very, very simple, uh, but is a good, good way to do it. Uh, so there is some setup that we'll need to do on this. So we need to get the jack under here and get this raised up, up to a uh, ride height. And then we will set this uh, pointer here to the, the zero mark. 
So we'll need to adjust that up and down, and then we'll need to come in and get this board parallel to this board. So we'll take some measurements at the front and the back and get it uh, to where it's parallel. And then we will be able to cycle the suspension up and down, making uh, measurements on this uh, dial indicator. So we'll also need to zero it out at our ride height. And then as we droop and uh, raise, we'll be able to measure the, the changes that we see there with this uh, dial indicator. So let me get a, a few things more set up and then we'll be able to actually measure this out. gone through several uh, iterations, cycled the suspension up and down, changing the, the stack on the tie rod, and the results are in. So I'll maybe put like a little graph up here or something like that, but uh, basically where we started off with was negative like 0.1, so toe out in the first inch of bump up, and then 0.175 toe in in the first uh, one inch of uh, droop. So that's really bad. Uh, so basically I have my suspension kind of at like an eighth or 16th of toe out. And I was basically getting double that just on this one side as the suspension uh, moved up and down. Plus, so in bump, it was towing out. So if I'm rolling over, this side is in, if I'm turning to the left, this side is in bump, this side's in droop. I am trying to steer the car to the right if I'm trying to, to go to the left. The car wants to, is steering itself to the right. So that's not very good. So that uh, is basically the opposite of what you would want. So that is why we need to check and measure uh, bump steer. And I was able to improve that and get it basically all the way down through a couple iterations of 0 0.001 inch in the first inch of bump. And then it goes to like 0 0.016, so still really good. And then in droop, it goes to 0 0.024 in that first inch of uh, droop. And then after that, it does start uh, to toe in quite uh, aggressively. I mean, it still only goes up to 0.1 of an inch, but in that droop isn't really an area where you really need it too, too much. Um, but yeah, the, the bump is staying pretty zeroed out. So I'm really happy with that, especially that first one inch of travel. So that's really good. Um, if you are trying to use this video as a step-by-step -step guide on how to do and set bumps here, probably don't. Um, I probably skipped over some steps and just showing them on the, the video. Uh, so sorry about that. But if you're doing the bump steer, definitely read through the instructions and make sure that you follow all the instructions uh, correctly. But for the most part, you cycle the suspension up and down. So you do have to take out the, the spring, as I said, cycle the suspension up and down. You're measuring the, the distance change between the two uh, pieces of uh, a plate here for this kind of setup. There might be other setups that are a little bit different. And then you adjust the tie rod uh, stack uh, distance there to change your uh, bump steer. So that uh, basically covers all of the bump steer. I now need to repeat this whole process on the other side. Uh, so we got to get that all torn apart and then get this side all put back together. Yeah, it's quite a bit to actually go and do bump steer, which is one reason that I haven't done it in the almost two years that I've been running this suspension. And shame on me because that that's what I get. The, the results are not very good. 
Yep, let me uh, repeat this all for the other side. We'll go over those results real quick. I'm all done with the passenger side and it was even worse than the driver's side. Still very similar. It went into a lot of toe out and uh, bump and toe in under uh, droop. So I then adjusted it to basically the same, the same ones that I had on that side and it still wasn't uh, very good. So it does go to show that you do need to measure on both sides that they will or could be uh, different. So I do have quite a less stack on uh, this one, on this side to be able to get uh, the measurements. And I actually got a lot better than I got on the, the driver's side. Under two inches, I got to 0 .004, uh, where on that side with two inches, I got to 0 .016. Uh, one inch is still the same, 0 .001. And then uh, in droop, went to 0 0.015, one inch, and then two inch was 0 0.028. So really good on this side where that other side uh, had a little bit more um, toe, toe in under droop than, than this side. So it kind of makes me want to go back to that side and play around with things, but I'm going to leave that as is. Um, so I'm pretty happy with uh, the results. So it really showed that uh, when the car was in bump, I was towing out. So basically on the brakes, both tires are towing uh, out quite a bit, which I think would give a lot of uh, instability kind of feel. And then under droop, so under acceleration, they're towing uh, in, which is then scrubbing the tires a lot and probably uh, losing a little bit of speed, just a little bit, but every little bit counts. Uh, so. And then as I was saying, like in like actually roll, it was doing the complete opposite of what I would want or what you would want. It was, if you're trying to steer to the left, the car was trying to steer to the right basically. So hopefully these uh, are gonna be really good, noticeable changes. Uh, but I'm glad that I finally, finally got around to doing this. Uh, I know it took way too long and I should have done this a long time ago. So I just kind of, really goes to show that uh, don't be lazy and do the work and get these things done. But that is it for uh, this video. Again, Maximum Motorsports makes uh, this bump steer kit for uh, Mustangs. It also has a uh, different cu couple of uh, bolt patterns on here. So this would be applicable to a lot of different cars. I think it has uh, the five lug. I think it also has a four lug uh, pattern on there. So very easy and nice to use and otherwise thank you guys for watching we will see you in the next video later reminder to also check your toe after doing bump steer uh, toe is usually one of the last things that you always want to adjust with doing alignment and yeah just changing the bump steer uh, gained me a lot a lot of toe out uh, i have just shy of an inch of toe, eight, toe out, basically seven eighths, which is a lot. And you can really see it on both of the, the wheels there. So make sure to check toe after doing any alignment changes.